What's up, Colts Nation? Finally, we finally get our first glimpse to see this amazing roster that Chris Ballard and the Colts organization have put together this year. And man, I'm pumped. And honestly, that's what it is for me as a fan for OTAs. You know, it's, you know, maybe it's your first chance to see Matt Ryan connect with Michael Pittman Jr. or Alec Pierce or Jelani Woods. Or maybe it's your first time to get to honestly see what Nick Cross looks like there on the field with Kenny Moore and Stephon Gilmore. You know, things like that. And, and, and I get it from the Colts organization. They wanted to have it. They were pretty adamant at the end of the season about how they wanted to have a strong turnout at the OTAs because they wanted to help build that brotherhood. They wanted to make sure that they bonded and, and got things implemented and, and got up to speed faster so they could have a faster start in the year and hopefully avoid some of the disappointments that we experienced last year. So I get it. They're, you know, OTAs are important, right? But the reason I wanted to talk about this today is because, if you haven't heard, Kenny Moore showed up to OTAs, but he did not participate. And I'll be honest with you, my first reaction was like, are you freaking kidding me? Come on, you know? It sort of had that that Andrew Luck, you know? And it's like, we had, we had Andrew Luck, and, and then that, the regime before just didn't protect him and stuff, and he got beat the heck up, you know? But then Chris Ballard comes in, and he, and he reinvic- reinforces the... Uh, Offensive line, and we got Anthony Costanzo, Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, Braden Smith. I mean, and I'm like, man, I can't wait to see what Andrew Luck can do with this offensive line. And then, boom, 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 as you know, we never got to see it because of the way things transpired. And then a couple years later, you know, we sit there and we're talking about uh, Marlon Mack, and then now we just drafted JT along with Naheem Hines and Jordan Wilkins. This could be the best uh, running back room in the entire NFL, and we're so pumped to see that. And then, not to any fault of Marlon the Max, but he goes out, he gets injured, and that boom, once again, we don't get to see any of that come to fruition. So my first thought when I heard this was like, are you kidding me? Because I honestly believe, guys, that this defense has a chance to be one of the best, if not the best defenses for this organization since they've been here in, in Indianapolis since 84. I mean, I really do have that type of expectation. And when I heard that Kenny Moore was – upset about his money, my, my initial reaction was like, gosh darn, are you kidding? It's just never easy, is it? But then I'm like, wait a minute, wait, wait. Let me check, you know, check on Twitter. Let me confirm everything, right? And and, and <laughs> shout out to the local reporters because they were all over. You know, they, they very well described what was going on with Kenny Moore and stuff, but they also gave me my, my videos and stuff that I wanted to see. So I did get a little bit of that hype, but I was a little bit worried about not so much about the situation between Kenny Moore and, and the Colts organization as much as it was just the way people were reacting to it. Because, uh, guys, I mean, Colts Twitter just went crazy. I mean, they, they covered every spectrum. I mean, I heard things from, heck with that guy. We don't need that guy. Just let him cut him loose and let him go find a job somewhere else. All the way up to, this dude's great. Give him anything he wants. And, and, and it's like, whoa, okay. I got it. I got it, okay? But the thing is, is, they're, the Colts are so good at keeping this stuff quiet, right? And who's to say that Kenny Moore hasn't already been in contact with Chris Ballard and the powers that be and already let them know? The thing, the thing is, is we're just finding out about it because this is the first time that the media has gotten cameras in there, you know, and reported on this new team, you know? Oh, everything's voluntary at this point, Greg, so, um, you know, throw the th- – you know, obviously, you guys know how we feel about Kenny. So every player's got to make his own decision. You know, we love Kenny. Um, you know, we're going to continue to work hard and get the guys ready who are here. You know, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, Kenny gets. I'm glad he's here. I'm glad he's here. I know he didn't get to work today, but thankful he's here and, and seeing and hearing everything that's going on. But how, but how does he let the word? Does he just let let you know by standing there and not, or does he walk up to you privately and say, "Hey, Frank, I'm not." Yeah, no. There's communication beforehand. There's communication beforehand between Agent, Chris, myself, and the whole deal. So, so you know, I just want everybody to just relax. Let's sit here and let's let this thing play out for a minute, all right? Let's look at what's really going on, okay? Kenny Moore shows up to OTAs. Those are optional, okay? It's not like he sat there and did what you see some of these other players do. It's not like he sat there and, oh, I'm going to take everything culture-related off of all my social media platforms. Or he's not in in front of the cameras, in front of the media, just blasting the organization. No, he's not doing any of that. He showed up. He's still there. He's. I mean, this kid's been. Or excuse me, this man's been plugged into this system for 
quite a few years now. You know what I mean? He's very familiar with what this team needs from him and stuff. And he's still communicating and bonding. So it's not like he's sitting there just dumping on the organization, okay? So I guess what I'm saying is, is let's not forget how awesome this young man has been for this organization. Because I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of people degrading what Kenny Moore was. No, he's a very valuable piece to this defense. Without Kenny Moore, this team is really struggling to, to fill that void. I mean, do you guys remember what it was like a couple years ago whenever he got injured and all of a sudden our defense just turned into a sieve? And I'm not saying that that's what it's going to be because I would argue a lot of our pieces are much better now. But all I'm saying, guys, is let's just take a breath. Let's sit here and really evaluate. And let's not, you know, just because he does something you don't like, automatically degrade the guy and act like he's crazy. Because let's be honest, Kenny Moore is one of the best slot corners in the league, okay? And his contract has been a value for the Colts organization. I understand he was signed and he was one of the highest or he was the highest paid slot corner. But the value that this young man has provided and the fact that he's still there doing the team stuff, let's just give Chris Ballard and Kenny Moore a little bit of time to sit there and have all their representation work work these things through. And I get it. The timing sucks. I I do. I understand that. I mean, you're sitting there, you're like, you're wanting to be hyped about something, but now now you've got something else to worry about. But let's don't turn this into like last year with the jab. You remember, guys, how everybody got so divided and stuff? Colts Nation, we all love this team. Let's just relax and let these guys work it out. You know, we sit there and we talk about how much we think of Ballard. And 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 we talk about how, I mean, do you guys remember Kenny Moore's the same guy that everybody went to bat for on the Walter Payton Man of the Year? I mean, Twitter was a nightmare because there was just Walter Payton or Kenny Moore, Kenny Moore, Kenny Moore. And then the same with the All-Pro, okay? So I get it. The timing, the fact that, we still got Quentin Nelson that needs to get signed. You know, yeah, I don't like it. But then you sit there and you think about it from the player's point of view, okay? He just had all pro his first year, right? He has, like I said, he has outperformed his contract. I don't think anybody can argue that. Yes, I understand that last year he started off slow, had a good center, and then started and then finished off bad. I do understand all those points of view. But what I'm saying is, is look at the whole picture of what Kenny has been to this team. Okay, and look how important it would be for him to fit into this defense because he is one of those pieces that makes this a special defense. Kenny Moore does erase some mistakes, right? I mean, you guys remember that interception he made in the end zone three, four years ago against uh, the Raiders where he just goes up one hand and skies it? I mean, there, you know, this is what Kenny Moore is to this team. All right, guys? And I'm not telling you to feel one way or the other. I'm not. All I'm asking is let's take a breath, let's show her some respect, let's listen to other sides of you, and then sit there and just give the, the guys that are in the position to do anything about it time to figure it out, okay? <laughs> and, I, I mean, honestly, guys, I sat there and I got on Twitter and I was on Twitter quite a bit and there was a lot of back and forth and just some some people being nasty and some people being you know defensive and stuff, and, and I get it. That's what you get with Twitter. But then, you know, I go into our Patreon. By the way, guys, check out our Patreon and our Discord. Patreon's five bucks a month. Awesome group of guys in there. Last night, we sat there and we talked about this for a good two, two and a half hours. And we had, and the thing is, is we have different age groups, you know, different mindsets and stuff. So we had a lot of different points of view. And that's where I got, where I'm at with this now 24 hours later. And honestly, guys, I, I feel like if we can sit there and, and go from where I'm at or somewhere close, I think that we'll find that this will all work out, okay? Because think about it. Kenny Moore did not sit, I mean, who knows? Chris Ballard, does he take any contract negotiations? Would he have talked to Kenny Moore through the draft? I don't think so. They're pretty busy with that. Did he through free agency and stuff? I don't know, but I mean, still there again. Ballard's busy on bringing in pieces and stuff. So the timing, it's, it may stink, but it's also... One of, the oper- one of the times where you expect a player to sit there and let the team be on notice. Hey, I'm not happy. This is what I'm not happy about. And, and, and let's assess it then. And I would argue that the Colts organization can sit there and understand Kenny Moore's point of view. Because he's not just a slot corner. I mean, heck, he played a ton last year on the outside corner spots, right? So let's just remember that this young man has a ton of character. 
ton of heart. He is a Colts through and through, okay? He is, he bleeds blue just like a lot of us, all right, guys? So I'm not trying to tell you where to stand on this. All I'm saying is, is step back, take a breath. Let's give the time to Ballard and, and the rest of these guys and stuff to find out the solution to this. I mean, remember patience? Remember how we all panicked about the quarterback situation this year? Now all of a sudden, boom, we've got Matt Ryan, right? So let's just give the powers that be time to figure it out. And like I said, guys, we all love this team. Let's show some respect. Let's keep it classy. And as Lawrence always says, have a good one. Just because a guy's a player's not a household name doesn't mean we can't make him a household name.